the Open Source Creative Podcast, episode 47, Making Things to Make Things. This is the Open Source Creative Podcast, a podcast where I ramble on about creativity, open source software, and process. I got those words mixed up from what I normally say, but that doesn't matter because <laughs> I'm Jason Van Gumster, your host and driver on the road to creative freedom. So we're going to try a solo episode and it's already going so great. Um, Fair warning, this episode is actually a, a fairly visual one. I'm going to do my best to describe things that, that I'm doing and showing for those of you who are audio only, but this is one that it's really going to be worth it to have to look at the video on it. Because, I mean, you could. I'm going to try to describe it, but I can't guarantee that it, my, my description is going to be as accurate as it could be. But we'll give it a shot. Of course, why would you want to watch this one? Well, because I'm showing stuff. Uh, we're talking about making things to make things. And I'm talking in depth about one of my projects and where I did just that. I, I made a customized moving mount for carving wooden rings. And yeah, I did it all with open source tools. So let's get right to it. Oh, we're going to toast marshmallows, are we? Could be. better all right so this is this is uh this actually came came born from some uh listener feedback and actually yeah listener feedback i have that now yay so yeah in any case um romaine marteau which i hope i pronounced your name properly but uh sent me a very very kind email and one of the things that he mentioned in there was talking about a uh custom ring carving mount that i made i made this uh, uh a while back and and um, but talking more in like I've made a couple of videos using it, but uh, talking more in depth. And I guess I guess you should back up for a second and talk a bit about specifically what it is and why I made it. So I, I have this other side thing that I do. I have a whole bunch of side things because you know creative stuff. But I have this other side thing that I do uh, called Bentwood Forge, and in that I make these rings that are made out of wood that are bent, like the one that I'm wearing right now. Um, but they're not sometimes they're not always just plain like this. Uh, they're also often carved. And so um, I'm going to show one or two of them if the video gets resolution. Uh, its focus is horrible. I need a better camera. But so this is a, a ring with a like a sort of a tree spirit guy with a beard going on in it. Um, this one is actually carved out of horn. It's a, a dragon with a whole bunch of scales and and those sort of things. I have much better photos for that um, on the Bentwood Forge website and Bentwood Forge Instagram stuff. I'll put links for that in the show notes. But I do these sort of carvings and. Um, and I make these rings and I, and I carve into them, but the problem is that carving, they, these are small and they're intricate, right? And holding something that small and using a small knife to carve it and do those sort of things, because I do this all by hand, uh, is, is, it's a non-trivial task, let's say. Uh, and it, you, sometimes you need an extra hand. And I've seen a number of like engravers, people who do engraving in coins or they'll engrave uh, metal rings or do just jewelry making sort of things. And they usually have these really, really nice, heavy um, bases and mounts that they use for, for, for doing their carving work. Um, you'll also see other ring makers use just a lathe and they'll just work on a lathe. I don't have a lathe um, and I don't have one of those ring carving mounts. So one of those engravers mounts would be ideal, but they're also like, I think the entry level price for one of them is like a thousand bucks. And I just didn't have a thousand bucks to throw at it. So I was trying to think of a solution and well, I thought of one, uh, I, I would make one, I would design one and make one. I have tools for doing that sort of thing. I got a 3d printer. I've got, um, I, I, I'm fairly well versed in making things. So, um, that's what I figured I would go ahead and do. And so this is, I'm going to show the final piece here and I'll probably have other camera angles of it, but this is the, the final ring mount and it has a little bit of noise to it. I'll take it apart so you can see what it, what it does. And this is actually the ring in it, a ring in it. And so the idea is, um, well, actually let's see if I can move the camera so you can see that. So, um, for anybody just listening, we'll get to that in a second. 
All right, so my camera's not great, but the idea here here is that this mount is on a rotating base, and my my desk right here is kind of slippery. I have this on a on a mat, but it can rotate, and the ring itself can rotate. So I can put my hand on here and carve on that while it works. And so this this whole setup allows me to rotate the base and rotate the ring so that I can always get. Ooh, there's some focus there and talking and holding at the same time. I can always have something working on it. So let's take this apart and, and go with it. I'm going to go, actually, I designed this thing in Blender so I could show it working in Blender and I can do a screen sharing thing so I can do all sorts of cool stuff. So with any luck, you're looking at, if you're on video, you can see my screen. If you're not on video and are on audio, audio only, I'm showing a Blender session that has uh, where I actually modeled and designed this ring mount. And looking at it, it this is this is it coming apart in there. And what we have is a base, and we have a base with a weight. The weight is obviously there to keep it there. That's part of the reason why it's the size it is, besides the fact that I want to have it so I can put my hand on it. But I had a three-pound weight, little disc weight, that I uh, wanted to keep the weight down on it for. So that right, this thing right here, this purple thing in, in, in the video at least is my stand in for my three pound dumbbell weight. And then that gets connected with a base that goes on top of it. And then we have, in order for the thing to move, we have a lazy Susan gear. And that's actually pretty straightforward. I'm gonna take this apart as much as I can because some of it's sealed together. Um, one of the things that I, sort of discovered in the process of doing this is that um, I initially did it with subdivision surfaces and sometimes the tolerances, I was designing it a bit tight with tolerances and subdivision surfaces get a little squeezy. And so when you start dealing with physical things that do 3D print, they get, uh, you gotta be really careful. Also do a better job of knowing how to use a caliper to measure things. That was something I figured out way too late after at least two failed prints where I was off by at least a millimeter and nothing fit, which is very frustrating. But so this is the base here. I've taken it apart and this is a fairly cheap three inch lazy Susan uh, bearing that you can get just about anywhere. If I can remember where I got it, I'll post a link to it in the show notes. It might be an affiliate link, but probably not just because I can't remember uh, what I, where, where I saw my affiliate codes for now. But in any case, so this is the base. It has a three pound weight in it, which I'm not going to, well, maybe. Let's see if I can do this without hurting too much. All right, so that's the base. And so I put a circle in there because there's my three pound weight. And that sits, sits in the bottom of it. And no, none of that actually moves, right? This sits static on the bottom. And I can put some feet. I would probably put some like rubber feet at the bottom of this. So it actually like on a slippery tip desk, like what I have, uh, it, it would actually stay still. But so, and that's, these are, this lazy Susan is actually screwed into the base. Um, and that worked out fairly well. The, the next part of this though, is the more complex piece. Um, and I'll show you why. It's probably easier to show you by taking it apart here. Uh, it's a little dusty because I have been using it. So this is the, the most complex piece of the whole setup. And let's get a good view of that. And I'll probably, let me go ahead and pull this into Blender so you can see it. So the biggest thing to notice is this part right down here on the bottom. You'll notice if, if you, <laughs> this is an oversight and a happy accident. <laughs> so the bottom of this thing, this Lazy Susan, it's screwed into the base, which keeps it from moving. Um, and I had originally thought, hey, yeah, I would totally want to screw this in the bottom of this. But when this is actually on the base and it's covering the whole entirety of it, um, there's, there's no way to figure a screw or a screwdriver in there. But fortunately, because I have this lip that sized to that, um, lazy Susan gear, uh, bearing, which, um, I got, I bought the, the bearing and then I measured 
and built it to this within Blender. Um, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do that, you're 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 setting yourself up for a world of hurt. And again, this is where I kind of got bitten a little bit with some of the tolerances. So you might notice if you were, if you again the focus on the uh, the video I have here is not great, but I, there's a, there's a fair amount of scuff marks and stuff down here because I had to sand this edge to just pull off just enough space so that it would actually when I set it on the lazy susan gear sits comfortably inside it and it takes a second for me to line that up but so that's the cool part is that that now this moves around and i have a solid base and i have a rotating thing and this right here this this sort of mound part of it is where i place my hand when i'm working it and i can place my left hand or my right hand on it because again it rotates to do that now the next cool part, and this is probably easier to sh show in Blender. So we go back to screen sharing. We have this thing here in Blender and there's my lazy Susan, there's the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide all these pieces, hide. And we'll isolate this and look at it individually. And what we have here, so there's the base. This is where everything fits in. By the way, printing this was, uh, Trying to get the right orientation for printing this was um, was it was a fun game, we'll say. Actually, and what I what I I'll have to double check what I did. I did the setup for this in in Ultimaker Cura for for doing the slicing. So I exported this file to STL and I brought it into um, Cura for slicing. And I believe the I did not want to mess too much with this right here because i needed my tolerances to be right on the uh these r rails right here and the rails are really used for attaching um the secondary the secondary part of the mount um which if i de-isolate here so that's this green piece over here that connects back with it and they come together and and work that way and so the tolerance, the, this I actually had to sand and clean up quite a bit because again, tolerance has kind of bit me in the ass um, to get that to, to play fairly nice. But once you do that, you get this piece, these little two T sliders, and I did two of them so it wouldn't twist or rotate too much on it. That keeps it from, from going, going too, too squirrely on me. Um, but in order to pull that off, uh, I believe, like, you know, I'll have to double check what I what I have in here, but I, I'm pretty sure I, I printed this sideways. Um, uh, maybe not. I'll have to do like that. Uh, yeah, I think I pretty much did. I, I'll, double, I'll see if I can... Well, actually, let's just do that. I have the technology. So this is what it looks like in Cura. And I printed it sideways because if I had to get because I have overhangs and because like there's a whole mess of overhangs in here I had to deal with. So there's supports that were put in that, but the advantage of while these supports were a bit of a pain to deal with, and I had to clean up the bottom quite a bit, um, this, the, the, the rails remain pristine. So while I did have to, did have to sand those and clean those up. So that I got smooth, smooth sliding on that, um, strength remained good and I didn't have to clean it up nearly as much to try to get all this overhang stuff taken care of, which is why I printed it with this orientation sideways. Probably also wasn't the fastest print either, but you know, it did the job. And so this is the other piece, right? We have what I, what I was sort of referring to as, as a, as a chuck, this is going to move side to side on the overall mount. And that's why we have these two, the little ray, little T-shaped pieces and that slides right on the rails and this way when you assemble it if i hold this up it slides in slides out and the reason why it's important for that to be variable is because not all rings are the same size and because i have the actual um the axles and chucks that are going to go and hold the rings i need to have that being somewhat variable in positioning so that's why it's it slides like that and it's still there's some parts where it's not as smooth as it could be, but it, it gets the job in a way that I, that, I, that I enjoy working on it. Now, of course, to get that secondary spin, I needed to get a, uh, well, I, I just, I didn't want to trust it just to 
rub on itself, right? Because it's PLA. I'm not printing this in anything like EBS or anything. I printed everything here in PLA. So what I did is I got these really handy. I have them over here. So sorry for my face getting so close to the uh, video for those of you on video. But I have the bearings are beautiful things. And so I got a whole kit of like 20 of these um, bearings, these uh, roller, they're actually rollerblade bearings. Um, you can get them fairly cheap. Again, if I can figure out where, <laughs> I did this a while ago, so if I can figure out where exactly I got them, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But I got a, you can get a, a, a kit of these, 20 of these for, for fairly cheap. And so I used two of them and super glued them into, again, I bought them, then I measured, then I finished my model to finalize for it. And you actually see it in the 3D model. Um, if you look at this sliding part of the mount, that's where I glued in one of my bearings. And then it has its mate on the main, main base right here. And there's some adjustment that I went into it because then we actually have the, the chuck pieces these two little guys. And I was really worried when printing these things out because, well, <laughs> it's PLA, right? It's a little brittle. It's not necessarily known for being abundantly strong. Um, and so I was worried that when I printed this out, that this is not going to hold up. But good news is so far after quite a bit of use, it's still holding up fairly well. And so basically what we have is that assembly, right? And it's this little bow tie shape. If you look at it, straight out. And the reason why we have this shape is because again, rings are different sizes. And the problem, however, with this is that as a ring gets smaller, it also typically gets narrower. And so this is not enough on its own for you to mount the ring. The ring needs a secondary surface to mount itself on. And so what I've actually done is I went and I purchased this this is uh just some this is actually some braided reinforced i think it's high density um polyethylene tubing you can get it at any sort of hardware store and plumbing shop uh this is a 5 8 inch i also have a more narrow one for smaller rings and what i do is i i cut a chunk of this off so i have a tube of it and then i slice a chunk of that out so it's it's a it's a tube with a line through it so it looks like so and what that means is that i can for whatever ring size i can cut out more or less of this diameter so i can get smaller or bigger and for really smaller rings i have a smaller tube for this this works for rings that are that'll go all the way up to a thumb size because what that can do and i have an example here is the ring will go around the outside of that and when the ring is on the outside of that and you slide it onto this assembly, like so, now it's securely in place. The, the um, polyethylene material, uh, it, it'll deform a little bit to fit these cones, which makes it stay in place, but it also, um, because it's it's a it's a polyethylene, it's a plastic, and it has a fair amount of built-in friction to it, so it it doesn't spin when it's on there. So it, it's held pretty securely. And then by combining that with the main chuck, or the the sliding part of that chuck, and we slide the whole assembly together, like was shown in the animation. Of course, I just did it backwards. So it goes like so. And so the long piece ends up going into the main mount, which I assemble like so. And this is the whole thing put together, Woo right? And it rotates and it rotates here, it rotates in two different axes. And this way I can, I have a video already. I'll try and put a link to it of me doing a little bit of carving on this mount. So you can see basically how it works and that's that's the the base assembly for this. Now, um, let's see here. So that's that's basic. Oh, there's there's one other key component. You might notice if you look at the 3D model and you look at this right here. There's there's this lip that goes all the way around this side and all the way around here. So my concern is as I'm pushing on this and spinning it around to to around, this can have a tendency to slide out like so, and I want to prevent that. 
So what this um, what this lip does is fairly simple. Of course, at this moment, I've misplaced the piece I was looking for. Sorry about that. It took me a second to find it. So, so what's that lip for? That lip appears to be this. This is a rubber band. And so what I do, very simply, is I will run the rubber band along that channel like so. Let's see if I can get it sideways so you can, anyone can see it. So it runs along the lip, sits on the inside there, and it's I can get more tints rubber bands if I need to, but it's just enough tension to pull that thing back into place. If it gets mis misaligned a little bit, that's not a problem because again, most of my pressure on this is downward. It's not gonna be pushing that way too much. And if it is, my hand's there, right? So that that's one of the, the, the benefits of working with it this way. And if I need, I can get more rubber bands to increase that tension. So I'll just run the rubber band also along that seam, like so. And now, now it's really keeping its position pretty well. Pops right back without a second thought. And I'm, I'm sure there's a more there's a more complex structure, an easy. Uh, um, sort of more mechanically sort of mechanically sound way of doing that. Um, oh, popped one of the rubber bands. That's an old rubber band. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a more mechanically sound way of doing that. If anybody has a suggestion that, that might be better for locking that in a place on sort of a variable way, totally down for hearing about this. Because I always want to try to, there, I already have ideas on how I'd want to improve this. I mean, also it's all faceted here. I'm going to try and I'm going to try the subdivision service thing again. Now I, I did consider doing this in FreeCAD um, and I tried it first, but I'm just way more familiar with the way Blender works and and those sorts of those sort of tools, especially for something that's got this kind of organic shape to it. So so that's why I opted for using Blender rather than a traditional CAD program. Um, for somebody else who's who's more CAD inclined, I would say you're, you're probably better off using something like FreeCAD or LibreCAD or or one of those tools. Um, but that's that's the basic assembly, and that is how that works. Now, the real question then is that now that I've got this put together, there, 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 there are improvements that I would love to do to this thing. Like I have seen some really interesting other types of ring chuck assemblies and that's, I've been misnaming and renaming the different parts of this thing. Cause I don't have really consistent naming. I really should, but this assembly right here, while, while I enjoy the fact that this works and, and it's a fairly simple solution to the problem. Um, I have seen some more intricate sort of ring chucks that they're they're more they're disassemblable, but they're interlocked, so they don't twist upon each other like this. And um, they use a screw mechanism to tighten and and loosen, as opposed to the whole assembly sliding left and right. And that might be something I could try, or if they you know someone's already produced it or three D printed it. I could either get the get the plans print it myself or just purchase that chuck and see if I can't modify the axis part the axle part of this to um, to serve to, to to fit that kind of chuck. So that might be one thing that that uh, uh, one improvement I might want to do to this. I'm, I'm actually pretty curious. I I, I haven't yet, but I, I think I want to put this whole thing on Thingiverse and see if anybody does any different variations to it. Um, because yeah, I would like I said I've been using this this little chuck of mine, this little uh, device ring carving mount uh, to uh, for for a while now on on my rings, and I've I've really quite enjoyed using it. And as I work on it, there are more improvements. But then again, you know, now do I want to spend my time using something that that is functional but could use improvements and keep making rings, or do I want to spend more time making the thing that I made to make the things, making the thing that. I you understand what I said. <laughs> um, and so that that's sort of the struggle, right? It's like, it's like I could spend a lot of time. I'm not building a, a product, right? I'm not designing this ring mount to sell to other people. Um, of course, the if other people wanted one, maybe I would consider that. But that was never the intent, right? I'm making something for me to solve my own problem, which is also a really big part of the the right, the open source way of thinking about it is scratching your own itch. It's 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 I have a problem. 
I have the tools to make a solution and I've made a solution to scratch my own itch. And so really what I should do is share this on Thingiverse. I guess that answered my own question for me on that. Um, I, uh, part of that I think is probably just so, some of the modeling I did for this and in, in, in Blender could could be cleaned up a little bit. And, and uh, I'm, I'm sure anybody who, who does it with the CAD package might, might have uh, a thing or two to say about the way that I approached it, but you know maybe that kind of feedback is something that that would help me improve in general. So that's why this will be going on Thingiverse, and I'll put a link to that on the show notes. I just made that decision just right now, um, and I'll be really curious to see what other people spin off of this and 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 do with it, and also just you know people print it out themselves and see about working the uh, the working with it and and doing their own carvings working on their own rings because i can see this also working for for other things like it's i'd like i like devices that are not single use tools and at this point this is good for carving rings but it's it's good for doing a lot of things with rings i can do finishing with rings i can do polishing with on the rings it's it's i'm not going to go so far as to say it's a hand lathe (laughs) because it's not going to spin that fast because i'm just using my hands to spin the thing um but for for sanding and smoothing and, and instead of just holding it in my hand and doing it, I can actually do this on my mount and have an extra extra set of hands or not make my hands tired from doing it. Um, there's, a, there's a big benefit to that. And I think uh, I'm, I'm enjoying that. So I'd like to see what other things people might think of doing with this sort of assembly. Maybe maybe there are other ideas that, that I haven't even thought of, which would be really kind of cool. That is the basis of that. And I mean, that that's... I think there should be more of people making things to make their own things, right? If you're making art, if you're making something creative um, and you need a tool, the tool doesn't exist. Why not make the tool? We have the technology to do that. Now that's one of the beautiful things about living in the world that we do now. We have the open source software that can be used to actually do the design. We've got 3d printers, which you can actually 3d print the parts to make 3d printers. Um, like that's a whole, that whole, the whole 3d printing community is, 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 got a very, very strong open source mindset as well in terms of sharing designs and improving upon them and, and and iterating upon those designs. And so we, we have the tools, we have the things to do. Why not, why not make the things that help us make stuff? And then we can, I can get back to making things, but um, we've made, we've made even more and, and brought more interesting things into the world. So yeah, that's, that's the show. I think this is actually kind of a shorter one, but that's probably, um, we'll say mercifully good. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually really curious about what kinds of things have you made to help you make things? Uh, did you go the route of 3D printing when you did it? Or did you fabricate it in traditional material like wood and, and metal, which is totally sweet, by the way? Um, I'm, I'm really interested. Actually, if, if you share it with me, maybe maybe we could do a show about it, and I, we can share your project or projects, uh, and 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 see what you've done. Because because again, it's not open source is not just necessarily about the software. It's it's also about the things that we make, and and uh, it's about tools. And so, if you're making a tool, why not use that same methodology, that same mindset for the tools that you make? So, definitely, if you want, share them with me. You can send them. The easiest way probably would be the email, podcastopensourcecreative.org. But of course, you can also track me down on social media. Again, I'm Jason Van Gumster. Uh, I'm basically everywhere on social media. Just look for my name, or if that's hard to spell, look for Monster Java Guns, which is an anagram. And, or you, for this podcast in particular, you can look for OSS Creative. And then you can tell me what you think there. Share your project with me there. The other thing is I do have an email newsletter. You can sign that up by going to the contact page on opensourcecreative.org. All right. Well, I think that's it. Give me a shout. Let me know how things work out. Now, time to get to work.
last job. Organization. I'm really good at it. Um, hmm. I lost it. 